we got some awesome digipack packaging sleeve type envelope awesome jacket art too i must say with um full track list facebook contact info i'll place that below too um it's www.facebook.com backslash mickey moon music um producing credits on here are from or from mickey cardoni and Jonas von Zeschwitz. All songs by Mickey Cardoni. There's no street date, but the copyright info says uh, 2013 by She Died Productions. www.she-died.com. We'll put that down there in the link below as well. And as a mu musician myself, the writing on this is great. It helps me to feel like I know and can relate to Mickey just that much better. And I would love to ask him about the inspirations on here for these lyrics. Uh, a lot of these songs feel very personal. You know, I would love to hear stories on these songs and how they came to become what they are. Um, after my last phone call with Mickey, uh, I can see some of the influences. Um, from other bands and stuff but his sound is really one of a kind you know when you get down to it his sound is really one of a kind and he does have many sounds he does cover a very 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 big spectrum of sounds and that that is just a great thing to uh, experience as well there's just a really great assortment um, of music you know and it's awesome because uh, they all have all the members from She Died kind of play, I think, in, in each other's bands, you know, like with Sardu and everything. So it, it's really cool. And, um, you know, it's really awesome. Like uh, some of the the songs that Mickey does with um, this female artist, I, I can't, I'm so sorry, I can't remember her name at this time. But you can find it on, on the She Died YouTube page. And they really... He really has such a great collaborative spirit as well, um, and it's just it's just really cool to see how they all kind of work together and everything. Also, the um, um, their efforts with with Beaver Slap also really really cool. You'll get a kick out of Beaver Slap too. So go check out Beaver Slap, and you can find that too on uh, their YouTube page. I just really love how they all work together. You know, everybody helps each other out. And uh, it's really cool because it's already so very, so very talented, and it just brings it to that next level of talent. And to have like that kind of like I want to say organization or or kind of um, collaborative uh, movement, you know, um, it's just really really cool because you know it just it shows that you know it, it brings it brings across the whole teamwork aspect of everything, and. You know, it, it's really cool because it, it gives us more to listen to. And, you know, we can see the each of the very unique flavors. I know that song that um, Mickey did with that with that nice young lady. Um, the tempo on that, just bam, bam, bam. It just, it just brings you to another place. And it's just really great to see the spectrum. So, you know, saying that, when you listen to this record, even though it's kind of... Um, um, it's kind of like a one, a one kind of overall sound for this piece, like for this record as a whole, I think, um, like one other song near the end kind of sticks out a little more where it kind of, um, flips the vocal around. But when you're listening to this as a, as a one piece, it does have a very, uh, unique flavor. It does have a very unique draw to it. Um. But, you know, do not mi be misled because, you know, Mickey Moon does have many, many, many sounds. But um, when you're when you're listening to this, I, I at times I felt more like this was a concept record, too. Like at times I kind of felt like I was on an on an adventure, you know, as like as like a whole. I was on one side of an adventure. It really gives off this kind of vibe of um I, I want to say unique, um, not availability, unique, um, 
it's kind of like the unique viewpoint from a character you know as you go through these go through these different um different songs and different stages and it's one of the things i wanted to ask mickey about maybe i'll, I'll ask him next time i talk to him about the um the progression and the order order of the songs on the record you know because they really kind of it, it it's it's like living through the eyes of the character and i love that stuff because i'm a really big fan of of um like the progressive music and and a big fan of the um concept records almost all my favorite albums are concept records and this is pretty pretty conceptual and it's it just comes along really really great um i don't know if there was a, a big thing of overdubbing in this um i kind of get a feel here and there of the overdub um especially in the beginning and the end i'm a big fan of overdubs like i on my music i will put 40 50 guitars i will put you know 10 basses you know i will i will throw as much in in there as i can a uh, cool thing about this is it also comes across a little bit like um like the actual one man band essence you know the tempo speeds up and slows down um you know as part of the song so it feels very organic um it really feels just like like you're getting 100 percent mickey moon you know and seeing him live and listening to the record too you can feel that the um, ominous presence you know it's very one man oriented and a little bit more on the topic of 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 um the great assortment of mickey styles because he has like uh, one of the great things about Mickey is he can transfer to different styles as he's playing. And in other bands, you know, he has different styles. You'll get, you know, one minute you'll get the folk Mickey. The other minute you'll get, like, the metal Mickey. You know, and then, you know, it kind of, it, it's really oriented. Like, it really goes around. Nice blues, you know, at times you get the blues Mickey. At times you get the rock the full out rockabilly Mickey, the rock out Mickey, uh, the pop Mickey, you know, it just, I love that it covers every spectrum, you know, cause that, you know, for artists to do that, it means you're never going to be bored. It means you're always going to be able to look forward to something new, which is really, really cool. Really cool. You know, like there's elements of, of ska and elements of punk and elements of country and, that really gives you a good stew when it you know when you're talking about a musician that really gives you a good uh a good girth to your back catalog too so that's that's really uh, you know a wonderful trait and i find that musicians today in the digital age you know with all like the digital music that's out there and everything it kind of you know I guess some of it's okay, but it kind of feels stale for them because, you know, they're kind of limited limited to that one genre. So it's nice to see bands like Mickey's bands and, and Jonas's bands and everything that can kind of cross the genre, go somewhere else, go somewhere new, and always keep you entertained at the same time. And I gotta say also as an artist and as a big fan of music that's impressive to me as well because I think over like the last 10 years aside from maybe listening to bands like Silver Sun Pickups and Muse I find that a lot of the bands out there are just doing the same thing over and over and cashing out on that you know which is not cool like well it's cool you know like if you're a fan of that one style but it really just adds more character to your persona to try and branch out and do different things as well. And I know a lot of people who try new things get shit on by the critics and by fans saying, oh, why don't you just play the same songs you used to play and play in that style? But really, um, there's much more of an appreciation for artists like Mickey and like everyone over at She Died, like Sardu and everything that can go outside the box outside the box sorry um case in point i was listening to a sardu song the other day um i can't remember the name of it i'm horrible like that sorry guys but um 
the video was a live video. It was in this white beige-ish kind of room and you had Tasso on the base on one side. I believe it was Tasso. You got um, Jonas in the middle and I think Mickey was playing behind him. I think it's Mickey on drums behind him. And it's like a really crazy ass metal song. So you got all like that metal going into it. And it's awesome because you get to see Jonas and he's playing the guitar and he's doing the metal stuff. Like he's shredding it up. He's got his metal chords and everything. Bam, bam, bam. Power chord, regular chords, uh, classic chords. But then he does this really cool thing between, um, between notes where he adds a very psychedelic element to it. Like he'll start playing um, more alternative chords. Um, a lot of people call that the fuck you chord because your index finger, say, is on the, the A, and then your ring finger is on E, A, D, G, I think on the, on, wait, on the, on the D, I think, and your middle finger is extended out, you know, that's why they call it the fuck you chord, but that chord's cool because you can slide you can slide with it and add this amazing, um, very psychedelic sound. You know, it was very big in um, in early '90s alternative with like you know like the Pumpkins and and uh, you know Sonic Youth and different things like that. So when I was watching, when I was watching uh, Jonas play like that between the metal chords going into all these cool different types of chords, I could get into it more. Also because I, I do that a lot too in my music because I like to do the um, the drop D or half step down D and play play a lot like that and then to do the power chord over it you know to give it a thicker sound you know at the same time. Um, Foo Fighters does that a lot on uh, Everlong if you listen to the song Everlong. Um, but to see Jonas do chords like that go from the metal you know to here to there all the different chord progression that was really cool because that you know it just it just reminded me that you know that these guys show the respect and the love for the different genres that they play in and that they can collaborate and on whatever project they're doing it's no problem to switch it up because they're very well educated in what they do so that really comes across as cool more more people should use that um that chord. It's a really nice slide technique, you know? Um it almost it almost gives you like a, a bar slide kind of feel to it, you know, without having the the bar ring on your finger. It's very cool. A couple of songs, a couple of favorites of mine that do that from the pumpkins actually. Go back and listen to like nineteen seventy nine. Go back and listen to Cherub Rock, you know, rocks out with that technique the whole way through. And it, it's funny to actually see that that video live because it looks like Billy Corgan's giving you the finger. You know, if you go back and watch the 666 videos, it looks like he's giving you the finger the whole way through. And of course, my favorite of Pumpkin songs, Zero. It gives the whole riff behind Zero so much flavor. And added with that harmonic, that doo doo doo, it's just fucking insane. So that's an awesome technique. More kids should pick that up. Like, 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 really, go and listen to Zero by Smashing Pumpkins. You'll see what I mean. They got, like, they got the, um, the fuck you chord going with the harmonic. And then, you know, overlay that with, you know, the power chord on the same, on the same chord. And then overlay that with, um, those cool palm mutes that come in. And it's, it's just brilliant. So seeing Jonas do that in the Sardu video, um, Seeing Jonas do that in the Sardu video, doing that, doing the um, the the quote unquote fu chord, and you know mixing it up with the different um, the different metal chords he was doing, it was just so cool because it brought this really cool aspect of psychedelia to um, to the metal. You know, it was just really really cool. I love that sound. So keep on rocking, guys. That's amazing.